Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video, and in this video I'm going to talk about Northland Power Stock. This is a series of videos in which I will analyze the top Canadian stocks in green energy sector, and I started with Trans Alta Renewables, and in this video I will focus on Northland Power as our second Canadian renewable energy company. I will discuss their business, their future plans for 2022 and beyond, their dividends, the risk associated with this company, and finally I will provide a detailed stock analysis using my personal discounted cash flow model and will then provide you the, with the fair value of the company depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded on TSX for 40.8 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly dividend with a yield of 2.94% and the market capitalization of the company is around 9.25 billion Canadian dollar. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor and this video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion. You should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, let's start this video. Northland Power develops, builds, and operates green power projects in North America, Europe, Latin America, and Asia. The company produces electricity from renewable sources, including wind, solar, hydropower, as well as clean burning, natural gas, and biomass. Their wind power generation facilities include three offshore wind farms, operating in the North Sea with almost 1,200 megawatt power generation capacity, and they have four onshore wind farms with 840 megawatt power generation capacity. Their solar farms provide almost 250 megawatt, and natural gas burning facility provide almost 1,000 megawatt power capacity. So overall, power generation capacity of the company is around 3,240 megawatts. Their assets are well diversified in terms of the geological, geographical locations, and they have exposure to various sectors of renewable energy, which is great. The company has a lot of facilities under development in the next two years and beyond, including their new offshore wind farms, which will add significant power generation capacity to the company portfolio in the next two years. They will also have two new solar farms, which can add another 250 megawatt power generation capacity to the company. The company predicts they will be able to generate close to 10 gigawatts by 2030, which means as which means an almost triple power generation compared to the current capacity. Here we can see a list of the projects that the company will complete by 2030 to achieve their goal of 10 gigawatt power generation capacity. As I mentioned, the company anticipates strong growth in the company power generation capacity in the next 10 years, with 7 to 10% annual growth in their earnings and 9% year over year growth in the underlying business. These numbers are amazing for pretty much a utility company, and that's probably why we see that the company is traded at a premium at least in the last couple of years. If we look at the financial statements of the company, we can see the history of growth in revenue, earning per share total assets, total equity of the company, operating cash flow, and of course, free cash flow of the company. As such, I would say the growth rate that management suggests for the future is not unrealistic and can be achieved by the company if they can continue to grow like the past couple of years. Northland Power pays a monthly dividend with a yield close to 3% at the time of recording this video. While they have a history of increasing the dividend, the company did not increase its dividend in the last four years. The main reason for not increasing the dividend, in my opinion, is that the company spent a lot of, buy and a lot of money on buying new assets in the past couple of years. And while it is hard to evaluate the exact valuations of these assets, maybe they overpaid for buying some assets and it put some pressure on the balance sheet of the company. There are some risks associated with Northland Power and the most important one is the balance sheet risk. The company invested heavily in developing and buying power generation assets all over, all over the world and some of their projects like, like North Sea still require some component replacements which need even more money from the company balance sheet. The company will probably rely on raising funds via financing or issuing bonds or diluting the shareholders, which can in turn reduce the returns in the short term. Whether or not these projects can be profitable, only time will tell, but there are absolutely some risks here to consider when investing in a growing renewable power company. 
Good news is that the management has a good track record of running their business and they probably can benefit from the trends in the Western countries and the demand for green energy. This is my favorite part of the video where I can show you my stock analysis based on financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted cash flow model which basically estimates values of stocks based on projections of their future cash flows. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years and then discount the future cash flow into the present value of the stocks based on my expected rate of return. Northern Power is a little bit different than other companies as their cash flow and earnings are vastly different. So I did my valuations based on free cash flow and earning per shares. So first I start with the past four quarter free cash flow of the company. And based on three different scenarios, I predict the future cash flow of the company in the next 10 years. In the bear case or the most negative case for the stock, the company can only grow 5% in the short term and then the growth will drop to 4% drop to in the long term. I consider terminal multiple of price to cash flow of 3 for this case, which is consistent with the historical bear periods for this company, as demonstrated here. For normal case, I consider a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 5, which is the historical average multiple for this stock. For the boost bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grows by 11% in the short term and it then the, the growth rate drops to 8% in the long term, which is consistent with the company predictions about the growth of the business in the next 10 years. And I consider the terminal multiple of 7, which is the bull multiple for this company. Now I assign 50% chance to the normal case, 25% chance to the bear case, and 25% chance to the bull case. For growth stocks, I usually expect 15% return, and for dividend stable stocks, I expect 10% return. If I expect a 10% return from this company, the fair value of the stock is 20.38 Canadian dollar, which means compared to the current share price of almost $40, the shares are traded at 50% premium, and it is not a buy according to the model. I also value the company based on its earnings instead of the cash flow and assign appropriate multiples here and it was still overvalued even more than before. This means if you expect 10% return on your money year over year, this company, this stock is probably not going to deliver that 10% and the only way you make 10% money with this company is to buy when the share price drops in the future. It's always fun to see what analyst predictions are for a company and according to Yahoo Finance, the Analyst price target for this company is currently at $45.5 per, per share for 2022 with a strong buy rating, which means analysts are optimistic about the company in the short term. Northland Power is a good company with consistent growth in the underlying business and cash flow, and they are heavily invested in the development of renewable assets in the future. The only issue I have with this stock is the valuation, and I think this stock is extremely expensive at the moment. So if invest in the company, if you absolutely believe in the management and in renewable sector as general, and understand that you pay a significant pre premium for owning this company, owning this business at the moment. I would personally avoid the stock at this level as it cannot provide 10% year over year return, but would buy the stock if it drops significantly in the future. If we look, at the past, at the last year, we can see that share price went down almost from 49 Canadian dollar per share to almost 38 Canadian dollar, and then it went up again, down again, up, down, up, and significantly down to almost 35 dollar per share. And then it has another huge run with Russian invasion of Ukraine and the rush to the renewable power sources. I think if you're patient, it is possible to buy this stock at a better valuations. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment and let me know what stocks you'd like to me to review next. And please consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching, and I see you in the next video. Farewell.